In this video, we're going to demonstrate how to use CLV as a criteria for making a decision on how much we need to pay in order to poach customers from our competition. So the context of this spreadsheet is as follows. A mobile phone service company wants to use incentives to lure the competition's customers away. So once they switch, they will sign up a contract for a year. And uh, the question is, how large an incentive should be given in order to maximize the total profit for this mobile phone company? So the context is as follows. The company can choose to pay customers to switch. If they pay out of 100 of the competition's customers, all of them would be switched to us. So the number with them would become zero for these 100 customers, and the number with us would be 100. Or you can choose not to pay for customers to switch. If you don't pay them, if you don't run any promotions, then 70% of these 100 customers would stay with the competition, and 30% of the customers would switch even without you running promotion for them. So the split would be 30 versus 70. So this is the data we're gonna work off. What the company wants to decide is what kind of switching fee do we want to pay the customers for them to switch? So this is a variable we want to find out. And this is a very competitive business, so it has a fairly low retention rate. And the probability to leave each year is 30%. And as I have just explained, the probability to come is 30%. So they're going to switch naturally at a 30% rate. And for each customer, the annual revenue is $400. And the profit margin is 10%. And therefore, the profit per customer each year is simply equal to the annual revenue times the profit margin. So enter. And the profit per customer per year is $40. And then similar to the CLV calculations we have done in the other example, we set the interest rate as 10%. So first, let's name these numbers. Select this region and go to formulas, create from selection, and automatically it has already selected left column. Click OK, double check, name manager, all the names are there. Close this. And next we want to calculate the number of customers for each year in these two different scenarios, pay them or do not pay them. We know that the number of customers with us, there will be people switching away because there's a probability to leave. And if they leave, where do they go? They'll go to the competitor. Here, the number of customers next year is, if they leave, they'll be gone. So it will be parenthesis one minus the probability to leave times the customers that we had the last year. Uh, however, we might gain customers who come to us plus the probability to come the next year times whatever number of customers that our competitor has. So that will be in E16 and currently it's zero, but once the switching back and forth starts to happen, it will no longer be zero, so we need to formulate it this way and enter. And then we also need to calculate the number of customers with our competitor the next year. And for our competitor is the number of customers that leave us, so the probability, so the probability to leave times the number of customers that we had last year and then plus, parenthesis, the number of customers who didn't come to us. So this sticked with the competitor. Close the parenthesis. And then times 
the number of customers from the last year and then enter. So we can copy these two cells down by double clicking here. And as you see, the customers would switch back and forth. The numbers are more dynamic in the beginning and towards the end, it becomes stable. This is the common scenario that's going to happen when you have this switch back and forth situation. And you can also see that since our competitor has a retention rate of 70%, because 30% uh, uh, will switch to us each year. Since our competitor has a higher retention rate of 70% versus us at 50%, ultimately you're going to see in equilibrium, the competitor would have more customers and we will have less customers. Now let's calculate the profit. The profit is equal to the profit per customer that we have already calculated. So profit per customer, double click, times the number of customers. And in the first year, it's special because we are paying a switching fee in this scenario to gain these customers. So minus the switch fee, double click to select times the number of customers. And then from there on, we no longer pay the switching fee. So it will be profit per customer, double click, times the number of customers we have. So now we only copy this all the way down. Okay, that's for the first scenario. For the second scenario, when we don't pay them to switch, they are going to switch naturally at a 30% rate. And of course, our customers are going to naturally switch to the other side at a 50% rate. And these two formulas that we have just done, they still apply, so you can actually copy them. Right click, copy, and come here. Right click, and then the first option will paste. So we're going to then copy this two cells all the way down. All right, so now we have calculated the number of customers over time. Let's calculate the profit. And here, since we're not paying them, it's straightforward. So it's just profit per customer times the number of customers and then enter and copy this all the way down. So now we have the profit projections. What we're going to do next is to calculate the CLV for these two different scenarios. So what we're going to do is to calculate the net present values for these two scenarios equals MPV. And then we already have the interest rate. So the interest rate and comma, and the series of values we have are here in this column, and then close the parenthesis. And this value, we want to convert the total CLV to the beginning of the year. As, we, as you remember from the previous example, this would give you the end of the year CLV, so times parenthesis one plus the interest rate. click, close the parenthesis, and then enter. So that's the total CLV if we pay customers to switch. Now let me calculate the CLV from the other scenario. So again, it's equal to MPV, and the first parameter is the interest rate. Double click, and then the series of values we want to use for calculating the MPV. And then close the parenthesis. Again, convert this to the beginning of the year times parenthesis one plus the interest rate. Double click and then close the parenthesis and then enter. So now we have these two CLVs and we can see that at least in this scenario, under the condition that switching fee is 
the total CLV is higher when we pay them than the total CLV of do not pay them. But we want to calculate a break-even fee at a fee where these two CLV numbers are equal to each other. So where pay the fee versus not paying the fee, they are equal to each other. We have the equal values of CLVs under pay or no pay scenarios. So I'm going to calculate the difference between these two. So equals to paying the customers to switch minus not paying the customers to switch and then enter. So this value currently is not equal to zero. One scenario beats the other. We want to calculate the break-even point so that we can decide where the switching fee should be. So for that, we're going to use a tool in Excel under the Data tab, under, again, What If Analysis. It's called GoSeek. GoSeek actually is a mini solver but it runs faster and it's more flexible. So let's just use this. So by setting the cell in F4 to the value of zero, by changing the cell, in this case, we want to identify the switching fee. So by changing the cell, switching fee in B4, and then Excel is gonna find the switching fee that would create a scenario where pay and no pay are equal to each other. So click OK. It has become zero, so just click OK. So as you can see, we have found the break-even fee is $34.22. At this value, the two scenarios, pay them versus do not pay them, would create the same CLV. So if you think more carefully about this scenario, realistically, what's going to happen is if you pay a fee that's below this, although the CLV would look higher, however, you may not have all the customers switching to us. So that's what we're trying to identify, the minimum switching fee that allows 100% switching in the beginning. And these two scenarios will give us the same level of CLV. That concludes this video.